I'm giving her a nice little winter scratch. She loves it. The beep has been removed from this video. And as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. It's a nice cold winter morning. It might be nice to come in and take a look at what Barbie, the redback spider, has been up to. One thing I do notice, there are no webs at all underneath her illustrious home here. She's been in winter sleepy mode and it's so cold this morning I've actually got a coffee with me to try to warm me up. Because we're highly educational these days, boring, I'm going to take a look at my Redback Spider control chart and where we're at, actually we're up this end of the scale. We, in the last month of winter, I'm in the last week of August and really spring for us doesn't quite start properly until we hit the equinox which is in September. And to decode that, we're really another month away before spring properly starts. You can have some of the worst winter weather during August being the last month of winter, but from here on, we're on a crash course to the next big spider season. Okay, that was the educational content in this video, and I'll just very carefully and gently put this away. Ugh. I'll tell you what, I've been chewing through the coffee here, and the next thing I'm going to do is a temperature check of Barbie's home. Doing the temperature of the top of Barbie's home, let's take a look here. That's, oh, crikey, it's at zero in Celsius, and in Fahrenheit, it's that number there. And moving down to the black area of her home, it might be a touch warmer. Oh, there we go, lovely four degrees Celsius, and that's the temperature in Fahrenheit. So Barbie's home's got, well, the climate control in a sense. We've got a cooler section and the warmer section. Now, what is weird about today, if you look at the weather charts, it says it feels like, okay, 2.5 degrees now. We've had this thing called an Antarctic blob and it's made big news and it's pushed cold weather up from the south because that's where we get our cold weather and there's been a lot of snow in the mountains and blah 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 and it's just one of these classic late winter mornings that often sneaks up on you because you think oh winter's almost over but it never really is. Now I'm certainly sure that Barbie knows that winter isn't over because as I showed before there's not a skerrick or web been set up by her and that's what she'll do when we get to a certain temperature maybe it's time to come and have a peek inside and we'll have to be very careful here because I'm not sure what she's been up in winter wonderland mode very very carefully take the lid off like oh my crikey's crikey Charlie's she's actually feeding on something <laughs> oh god there's an egg sack there and there's also a whole bunch of snails crazy my little fingers are getting cold now and I have to be very careful here because I don't want her upset her too much. She's obviously got web going up to the top. I can see another snail there. I'll just have to get the tweezers in, put the camera down to break away some web going to the top. Okay, well she's somehow still got attachment there and the other very curious thing here is I believe, I think it's a male or it could be another female though, I need to get closer in on it. There's another spider here. Okay, I've got that broken away. Barbie's fallen down there. Let me look at the spider here. So what we've got here, it's a very small, immature female redback spider reclusing with Barbie in wintertime. There she goes. I would have liked to have seen a male, mind you. It's very hard to find males because they only live for about six months after the spidey thieven. I hope that was educational. I don't want to lose the little girl there. It's like Barbie's sort of sister in a sense, and I will, as I've done other times, just put this underneath the spider home there, and it just gives me a bit more things to look at when I look down. There's a nice shot of Barbie, and somehow she's got a black beetle. I'm surprised they're even active this time of year. But then again, we are on the cusp of the next spider season, and she was feeding, and she's got an egg sac in here, and that's also very much surprised me. And as I've seen before, these spider homes are also the perfect snail home as well. I've got a family of snails. Now remember, this is a cold morning. This is a temperature zone that these spiders are not going to be that comfortable with. They don't like it when it gets down below zero. And I'm going to see how feisty Barbie is in the cooler conditions. Let's see if she has a go at the tweezers or if she's just going to play still and dead. Mm. I'd say she's almost acting in slow motion versus what I've seen before. Yes, it's a, it's a temperature uh, time of the year where these spiders 
I think they really struggle. Yeah, you can see she's not really doing the, the fast, hard actions that we saw when it's warmer weather. That's very interesting to see, isn't it? I don't know when the egg sac was done because I wasn't looking at her all the time. I just try to leave her alone as much as I possibly can. A couple of facts about Barbie. Let's just say she was born at the start of 2020. That's when she was a spiderling. So she's eight months old. That's an eight month old redback spider. And notice her rear end is quite large. So you know what that means? There's another egg sac on the way. I'm curious myself. I know there'll be non-believers out there, but look how docile Barbie is in this cooler weather. I can literally tickle her and she loves it. I never thought I'd see the day. She's not going for the tweezers. She's not doing the redback spidery things that we've seen so often. It's quite astonishing. To give you the brief history of Barbie the Redback Spider, she was moved to this spider home way back on the 20th of January 2020. She was a tiny thing, she was cute, and it was a day where there was a big storm, and I remember going back and checking out to see if she was okay, and sure enough, she was right as rain. I remember late in February 2020, I checked out the temperature of Barbie's home, it's the end part of our summer, it's often the hottest time of year, and sure enough, Barbie's home was like an oven. Such a contrast versus the temperatures that I saw going on today, which is right at the end of our winter. And Barbie was up to other things back then in February, and she laid up her first egg sac on the 20th of February. February 27 was the second one, March the 5th was the third one, March the 13th was the 4th one, March the 25th was the 5th one. Noticing it was almost basically a week apart with the egg sac, so it's like bang, 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 bang. We've gone through the bulk of winter, and now I can see there's an egg sac in there, and it is the, well, I'm going to call it the 15th of August, although I made this video on the 23rd of August. So it is a mystery when this one was laid up, but I'm sure that Barbie, as long as she's getting food, she could potentially be laying up egg sacs right up till March 2021. Now, considering she's about to lay another egg sac, she's already almost got two going in the new spider season, so I'm scared to even think how many egg sacs she could generate over the next spider season, with every egg sac having, say, 250 cute redback spiderlings, it starts to add up to some very scary redback spider maths. I just did some quick calculations and without getting boring, remembering Barbie can generate three redback spider egg sacs within a month. Just think between September 2020 to March, say, 2021. And when you start to extrapolate the information and the numbers, you can get a figure over 5,000 cute deadly redback spiders all looking for a new place to live. I told you the redback spider maths is scary. Uh, one more time for the non-believers, it is much cooler weather. The redback spiders tend to slow down, and I can almost give her a bit of a, a rub there. Look at that. I'm giving her a nice little winter scratch. She loves it. And she's not doing the things that redback spiders would normally do, and that is get some back leg action, some web going, and being fast and aggressive. Wow, she's a wonderful pet spider. I love her. Even though Barbie seems very docile and placid to play with, uh, it's not the spider you want to put in your hand. It's one of Australia's most deadly spiders. Now what is interesting, there's no cone of web that they make as a nest, and Barbie's never made one either in here or in the lid, and I really should let her get back to a, a normal day, although a very slow day by the look of it. I'll just see where the other spider is. Okay, our little sister is there. So she's still cracking on. And I'll just very, very carefully, oh, I want little sister not to be there. I want little sister to be more in the middle. Okay, and I'll just very carefully put this on without taking out little sister, of course. Okay, done and dusted. And I'm sort of wondering, when is she gonna be triggered to set up her webby network underneath there to catch all the wonderful critters for the next spider season? I'm going to wind back to earlier in the year, back to January. In fact, it's January 20. This is the morning of the time when I found Barbie and put Barbie into a home, but it's down at the local gym. Our local gym is completely infested with redback spiders. They live 
around the steps, I live around the tile area, and in the mornings, sometimes I would see the redback spiders out in their webs, and I thought to myself, what are they doing out in the heat? Remember, this is Australia, so our seasons are the reverse to the Northern Hemisphere. Basically, everything in Australia is either upside down or totally backwards. That's what you need to remember. Normally, with redback spiders, you would not see them out in their webs during the day. And it often confused me when I saw this, and I thought, why am I seeing this? The spider's getting hot, it would be susceptible to a bird seeing it, and then it's the next meal for the bird. I could see the spider had a beetle, but it wasn't really being that active. Normally, these spiders get very frantic when they've got something in their web, and I could see there were pony ants around, and it was one of these things where I watched this for some period of time, and I was trying to figure out why do I see the spiders being very risky and not reclusing during the daytime. So there I am at the local gym, laying on the pathway with my iPhone making this video, and sometimes people would come up and say, are you okay? Because they thought I'd collapsed or died. It's nice that people care. There's some places where people don't care. And there are some times when if you wait long enough, you start to see a dynamic of things that, well, you've got to see it to believe it. And I was lucky enough to witness a skink appears, moving quite fast, chasing a black spider. I believe it's a false widow. I hope I'm correct there. I thought the spider was history, but somehow the spider scurried away. It all happened very fast. I will rewind this and we'll play it in slow motion. We'll analyze exactly what's going on here. But then I thought to myself, okay, I'm starting to see that this area here, apart from the spiders being around, there are the things that also eat the spiders. And after witnessing the amazing skink, and it happened very fast, I thought to myself, okay, the safest place to be at the moment down at the gym is actually out in the middle of your web, where really the skinks can't get up and get you. So maybe this is why sometimes, and it's not very often, you will see a redback spider out in its web in the middle of the day being very obvious. It was a morning where the skink was very unlucky, the false widow spider scurried away to live another day, and the redback spider who lives down at the gym was safely in her webby network, away from the jaws of a hungry skink looking for its next meal.